Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post now tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am starting off by prepping my client's nails. She currently has a pretty old set of nails on. We've been doing fills on them. I'm not quite sure if I have shared those videos with you guys, but I'm pretty sure I did share the Ombre original set. They are pretty outgrown now since she has had them on for a little while but you can kind of see the white at the very tip. So basically I'm starting off by removing the top coat that we had put on her nails and then I'm going in and focusing on that cuticle area just in case she has any sort of lifting. And I also like to bring that acrylic thickness just lightly around the cuticle area specifically so that the acrylic that I'm going to be filling in with lays perfectly and blends very well. So I'm going in and just removing that top coat again trying to get that cuticle area nice and thin so I can blend effortlessly while removing any lifting she may or may not have. My clients do very well with their retention as far as that goes but we do have certain nails that will get a little bit of damage to them which is fine. You just have to make sure that you are fully removing that lifted area. She is a hairstylist, so she is continuously working with water and different types of chemicals and all that stuff, but her nails stay on pretty, pretty well, so I am not complaining. I'm going ahead and continuing to remove that top coat, and then we will be moving on to our prep. Thank you. 
Getting right into our prep, I am using my Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file along with the mandrel bit. I have my e-file at a speed of 4000 RPMs and my sanding band is medium grit from Profiles Backstage. Very, very fine so it will not damage the client's nails as long as you are very careful with it and you have it at a very low speed. So I'm just going in gently buffing off the shine from her natural nail. This is a must. You cannot skip this step otherwise the acrylic will not adhere properly to the nail. You will get almost immediately some lifting so you want to make sure you are fully prepping the nail for any type of acrylic or enhancement application so i'm just going very gentle i try to not stay in one spot for very long as that can also cause heat spike which you want to absolutely avoid it can be very very painful trust me i've done it on myself and it is not a good feeling so I'm just going ahead and buffing off that shine again very very gently very gentle on the pressure as well you want to be as careful as possible It's too late now to turn around and back again I made my bed and now I lay my head in it And I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew broken plan so we can start again wanting down a second chance i'm too selfish for that now I am going in with a needle bit. This is a very, very fine bit used around the cuticle area, which helps to get into those hard to reach areas. As you can see, there's still a lot of gunk coming out. That's a lot of dead skin that you might have missed from the mandrel bit. I absolutely recommend this step if you guys are having with any lifting issues. This has changed the retention on my clients dramatically so i absolutely suggest you guys invest in one of these they last a really long time as well which i also appreciate uh, you can find them in my amazon storefront if you guys are wanting to purchase it so i'm just going in very gentle still have my e-file at 4000 rpms and i'm just going gently around that area trying to get all that gunk out for our application
I'm also going in with my cuticle ball bit. This one is going to gently buff off the cuticles, any dead skin around that cuticle and around the nail. So I highly recommend this one. It's also one of my favorite. It came with the needle bit in a pack of three. I'm not quite sure what the third one was, but these are the two that I stick with using the most. It helps me so much try to get that area nice and clean without having to nip anything off. I do not like using a cuticle nipper. I mention this in every single one of my videos. They terrify me. I'm scared that I'm going to cut somebody. So this helps just gently buff that off without actually having to cut anything off. So I have now moved my e-file up to 5,000 RPMs. I have found that 5,000 RPMs compared to 4,000 RPMs does a way better job. It's slightly more effective than 4,000 RPMs. So if you are struggling with removing it with this specific cuticle bit, put it up one speed, use very light pressure, and it should do the trick. I have had very good success when it comes to using it at 5,000 RPMs. I'm just going to go ahead and finish that and then we're going to be moving on to our fill. I'm going to be thoroughly cleaning that nail off along with dehydrating the natural nail. Doing this with a lint-free wipe and some swipe from Young Nails, I am scrubbing that in. It helps remove all that gunk along with dehydrating the natural nail, which ultimately helps with any lifting issues as well. Now we're going in with our primer. This is going to help the product adhere. You do not want to skip this either. Even though we dehydrated the nail, that basically removes the oils from your natural nail and it also helps with adhesion, but ultimately a good primer is going to do the trick as well. As long as you're doing the rest of your prep work and adding a good primer to it, you should be golden. This is Triple X Bond from Not Polish. Definitely recommend it. It is one of my favorite go-tos and it has helped tremendously with any lifting issues as well. Now getting right into our acrylic fill, super quick process. I feel like the prep takes me the longest, honestly speaking, <laughs> but my fill is super easy. I'm just adding that nude color that we use. This one is first nude from Not Polish. Along with that, I'm using their acrylic brush in the size 12 and their acrylic monomer. So I am using this really pretty nude that I've been using a ton on myself and on my clients. And I'm just filling in that growth. I like to start where the existing acrylic is and then I gently push it up. Always remember to hold the finger in a downward position. That is going to be your best bet to avoid any flooding in the cuticle area. It is very important to note that even though you feel like you're cleaning up the acrylic from those sidewalls, a lot of the time you're still leaving a little bit behind and that can cause lifting so you want to make sure you avoid any overflow as best as possible so as you can see i'm adding about a medium sized bead of acrylic where it grows and then i'm just gently pushing it up i'm holding the finger in a downward position which helps the product flow towards the tip and not into the cuticle area and then I just do a little bit of cleaning up and boom, you're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. Very simple process, very quick process. I have learned to love acrylic fills. I used to despise them at the beginning, but once I got all of my prep work done properly, I have now very minimal lifting on my clients. It is a breeze and I absolutely love doing fills.
once we're done with our acrylic fill, we're gonna go in and start our filing process. For this, I'm still using my rechargeable e-file from Kiara Sky. I'm now using my five-in-one carbide bit. This was in medium grit. It is in the color rose gold but they have tons of colors to choose from i've mentioned this over and over again it is my go-to and my favorite five in one bit that i have used and i have tried lots of them <laughs> so just to give you guys a little bit of insight on that i'm going gently around the cuticle area very very gently i just want to make sure that the acrylic is nice and flush and then i am gently going over top of the entire surface of the nail just making sure that that acrylic that i just laid is nice and flush to the existing acrylic she already had so i'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails i am using my e-file at a speed of eight to nine thousand rpms for this step Now we are going to be removing just a tad bit of that length. To do so, I am using my hand file. This one is my Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick file. And I start off by shaving off the slightest amount from the length. And then I start reshaping that into a nice almond nail. So as you can see, I'm going on the sides, making sure that I am getting it as perfect as possible for my liking and my client's liking. As the nail grows out, because she has had this set on for quite a little bit, the shape will start to widen up because it is bringing out the width of her natural nail. So I want to make sure that I get those sides nice and skinny again and make it look all cohesive versus it looking a little bit off from that length and the growth and all of that. So make sure you guys are reshaping the nails as you guys do fills. It is very important for them to not look all wonky. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. I'm using a good amount of pressure for this because she does have a good amount of acrylic. It's going to take a little bit more effort, but nothing major. So again, just shaving off the slightest amount of the tip and then reshaping those nails.
Now my client's been on this kick of nude neutral nails and she decided to add a little bit of spice to this nail set. So we are buffing the surface of the nail. We are going to be adding some nail art. For this step, I'm using my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage. It's very, very fine. It gets everything so, so smooth, which is a perfect canvas for any type of nail art that you're wanting to create on the nail. I'm going ahead and using a good amount of pressure for this step, just going back and forth. As you can see, I'm using my ring finger from my other hand to really stabilize her finger. You do not want it to wiggle all over the place because it can be uncomfortable for your client. So make sure you are really, really holding that finger in a good position and a good amount of pressure on your end. Now we are thoroughly cleaning that nail for our nail art application. Again, using a lint-free wipe and some swipe. Thoroughly cleaning that, getting rid of all the dust and all that stuff. Now we're still doing very neutral nails, but she did ask for the kind of swirled nail art effect that has been trending a lot on social media. We're just doing that with white. I asked her if she wanted any specific kind of swirls she said no to just do them random so i'm using my favorite nail art brush from a cart this one is from amazon you can find it linked in my amazon storefront it is specifically the blue one it comes with two other ones in the pack but this one is my favorite i feel like i use it ultimately for all of my nail art whether it's very detailed or thick i feel like it's the perfect thickness so I'm using my frosting gel paint from Profiles Backstage, my favorite gel paints to work with, very, very pigmented. I feel like the consistency of the gel paint as well is perfect for my specific liking. So I'm using that for today's video. We're going to be doing the random swirls she has requested. I was not looking at any picture for this. I kind of just went with whatever my brain told me to do and it turned out pretty cute. So. I'm just adding those on there. I'm making them pretty thick so that it covers a good amount of that nail and it doesn't look, you know, kind of out of place. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that for this specific video. I am not flash curing in between each nail because it is a very simple design and I did it fairly quickly and I was able to also do it without getting in the way or I knew that I wasn't going to smudge it, so. Super, super simple for today's nail art, but it is trending, so definitely recommend you guys give it a go, do some neon colors, and it would look so good against nude. Ale 
Now I did use my Kiara Sky rechargeable LED light to cure this nail art. I went ahead and cured the other hand while I was working on this one. Once everything is fully dry and cured, we are going in with our top coat. As I mentioned, she is a hairstylist and I wanna protect her nails from all of the crazy stuff and products that she uses. So I'm using my stain resistant top coat from Young Nails. This is my go-to for my hairstylist and anybody that works you know, with stuff that can mess up their nails. It is a must. It is a little bit pricey, but I feel like it's so worth it. The clients appreciate it. You will appreciate it because if you don't use this, they'll probably come back in a few days and expect you to fix them. So make sure you are protecting your precious nail art and your work as best as possible. I'm going in and adding a thin layer of this, curing it fully in the light. And once she's out of the light, I'm taking a lint-free wipe and some swipe and thoroughly cleaning that surface as it does have a sticky tacky residue left on it that's the only downside but i can look past that because this is a really good product and then we're going to be adding some cuticle oil my favorite one from profiles backstage a must as well it does not leave an oily cast which i feel like is crucial when it comes to getting good pictures and videos and all that good stuff so i'm just rubbing it all the way into her skin and then I lightly brush my fingers down the sides of her nails to make sure that she doesn't have anything sticking out or anything that I might have missed. I would then go in and fix it at that point. That basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.